Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of Late Friday Night's Banter Bleeds. I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky, and we're going to play uh, some chess uh, simultaneously uh, learning something new from it, hopefully. Um, all right, so as usual, I'm going to start with several games against uh, people I've never ever played before. And uh, just let me know as usual in chat if the stream is okay. I mean, the sound, the picture, and so forth. Uh, here we go. Uh, we don't have a lot of challenges right now, so it will be not uh, that hard to find uh, guys I've never ever played before. So, most likely, uh, the first one will be Hamhock Jean, uh, because according to the history, of our encounters, there were nothing. <laughs> so let's go. All okay, says Graf von Paulin. All right, Dead Moros also says all good. Very nice. Playing as white, the first game. Let's go e4. d6, d4. So we start with what? Uh, Either e7, e5, or g6 here, I suppose. No, knight d7. Also a playable move, so with the idea of playing e5, I think. Let us start with bishop e3. Should be a good, should be a good move. All right, and now d5. So it was an intention not to play knight c3, just to have this c4 possibility. To put the knight on c3, only after that, controlling the center much better. So white is now much better prepared for c7, c6, let's say, undermining d5, because after cd5 it's possible to take with the c4 pawn. It's also possible to take with the e4 pawn. I mean, white just has uh, more freedom. Okay, knight to h5. Let's play queen dt, preventing bishop to g5. Moby Chess says the stream is okay. Great. Great. So it's something very typical for this line. Black is trying to exchange the dark script bishop if it is possible. Uh, queen d2 is not the only move here. And it's, it says that I disconnected for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm back. Did it affect the stream? Yes, it did. Which is very bad. All right, so there was a glimpse. Hopefully, it's okay now. But just let me know if it will happen in the future. I will try to change the settings or something. Okay, h6 uh, with the idea of bishop g5. Now it seems I cannot really prevent that. Let's just castle. Moby Chess says it is still okay. Chromic Student says for a second the stream hanged. Yeah, that was exactly at the moment when uh, I disconnected, I think. So now let's just play King B1. I want to prevent the exchange of queens at least. So Black is doing well right now, making the progress, getting rid of this. Uh, bad bishop. Now light squares are uh, controlled by white, but dark squares are probably quite weak. So I have to be very careful now. Very careful. Because there is a risk of losing the control of dark squares all around the board and um, all over the board, I wanted to say. <laughs> Because what happens uh, actually around the board, well, is not very important. Okay, knight to c5. Hmm. Maybe just intended to play f5 even. So it doesn't look like a bad move. 
All right, so I'm going to do a strange thing. So I'm just weakening an F4 completely, but I think it's much more important for me right now to prevent F5. Otherwise, um, black is doing very well. I guess if black manages to play F5, he F5, bishop F5 check, and my bishop is still on F1, black just controls a lot. So I'm trying to grab the space on the keen side. Yes, F4 is weak, but I will try my best to uh, fight for this square with pieces. And potentially, maybe I will have some chances on the king side, but it's actually unlikely if uh, black plays correctly. So probably there will be something on the queen side long term, I mean, after exchange of queens or something like that. All right, for now, let's just try to complete a development. It's a 92, intending just to grab the knight f4. Another idea potentially is just to bring the knight through g3 to f5, let's say. Okay, I think it's a good idea to take with the bishop to coordinate the rooks. And now I have some simple ideas like, you know, preparing g5 maybe. If I play immediate g5, black has h5, closing the position. At least trying to do that, but then I can play f4, e takes f4, queen f4, and h5 will be hanging, which forces g6, which weakens f6, and I can try some like e5, I think. Mm, do you know? If I play rook to g1, black plays probably b7, b5, then I try g5, h5, g6, another way to try to open up a position on the king side. Mm, not sure. Let's try g5 right away. I guess time matters now, so it's better to start active operations as soon as possible. Okay, now f4. So I have a feeling that uh, there is a problem with the stream. So after this game, I will try uh, one thing. So probably the stream will disappear for several seconds. And uh, you know, then it will be back and probably this will solve the problem. I'm sorry for that, guys. It happens from time to time. There is a problem with my provider. So I cannot actually solve it for now. But fortunately, it doesn't happen like uh, every Friday, which leaves us some hope. <laughs> so what's going on here? Position is quite complicated. I have a thread of just playing bishop h5 at some point. Also, Long term, I'm going to bring the knight to f6, which will, will be just nice if I manage. All right, so let's put the queen on d4. Don't see a better square for it. Oh, black is doing very well here. Unless I have some luck before. But I don't think I had that possibility. All right. So it doesn't feel like I have anything. It will be really cool just to just to equalize comfortably, but I don't see how. So let's play this move. I think it doesn't hand a lot. So knight c3, queen c3. Now probably rook to e1 next move or maybe c5, we'll see. So now we're both in a severe time trouble. So my opponent is just playing quite decent chess, honestly. Huh. 
<clears throat> okay, let's grab the space. What is nice in White's position is that I have a pawn majority on the queen side. Uh, that is quite efficient if compared to Black's pawn majority on the king side. Because Black's majority is. something is very hard to to use all right now what to do rook e5 looks pretty cool b6 Right, I won on time, but uh, I was extremely lucky. All right, um, I'm going to try one thing uh, that is uh, going to help with the uh, dropping frames uh, in this stream because, as far as I understand, uh, there is a problem. Uh, right now, it's probably okay, but uh, it may happen very soon again. So uh, probably the stream will disappear uh, for several seconds. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, this thing will help. All right. Um, so let me know if the stream is back on chat, and um, I'm going to analyze this game quickly. Uh, so Black was doing well. I think uh, there was not very good order of moves that I chose. So after knight h5. Uh, Probably it was better not to play queen d2 because after that it is very hard, very hard to um, avoid this bishop g5 move. So I have a feeling that bishop d3 was better than that, or maybe knight to e2, something like that. Uh, after queen d2, black played uh, absolutely correct h6, and uh, bishop g5 is also just a programmatic exchange of dark squared bishops. And black is doing well here. Um, Maybe queen g5 deserved attention here, just continuing with the same plan. But after queen g5, maybe black was worrying about c7 pawn. So something like taking here and knight b5 is potentially annoying. Yeah, probably that's why black didn't play that. So uh, knight c5 looks also very natural. That's okay. I played g4, knight here, h4, um, and bishop to d7. Okay, not sure that uh, it was the best move. Um, I have a feeling that um, something like a5, a4 deserves serious attention. Uh, or maybe a6, b5, even sacrificing the material quickly. So like a6, say I play knight to e2, um, knight takes e2, bishop takes e2, and then b5. Or maybe even b5 right away like uh, here when a bishop doesn't control b5 square because it is simply bl blockaded by the own knight so something like b5 here and if i take on f4 let's say e takes f4 queen f4 and now well, it's hard to say what is better to take on c4 having the b file open or to take on or to play b4 like grabbing a space i think taking on c4 bishop takes c4 rook to b8 um, on the other hand, it doesn't feel like it's sufficient compensation, to be honest, because uh, there is no coordination in Black's camp for now, at least. There is a big problem to uh, organize the attack against b2, so I think if I just play g5, 
and so on I'm, I'm doing very well so who knows who knows um, maybe maybe it's just okay for white I mean this position in general um, because of this pawn on h6 I have a cook almost constant problem for black I mean this g5 so bishop to d7 all right so after all black had a good position after this g5 h5 f4 takes takes g6 e5 bishop f5 all right here d takes e5 queen e5 you know maybe queen d6 immediately was was better just um offering the exchange of queens if i take then after cd6 black is completely all right i mean black is probably even slightly better uh, at least i like this pawn structure there is really uh, a great possibility to open up the a file after b5 and then there will be even a threat of a checkmate after knight b3 so no it's not how white is gonna play here so probably i would have played some like queen d4 uh where after mm, what is the best move probably still b5 probably just still b5 i mean after this and this knight b3 probably doesn't work or maybe it does so knight b3 is also interesting look at this so a takes b3 a takes b5 check now if knight goes to a2 just rook a2 rook a8 with a checkmate so i have to play this now b takes a4 b takes a4 it should be just lost for white after say bishop to c2 yeah interesting so probably even queen d6 is not needed in fact b5 should work immediately but after b5 maybe i will have i will, I will play d6 right yeah so queen d6 is nice or maybe rook e8 no rook e8 i have queen d4 with the temple so queen d6 looks great in fact so i don't really want to take uh, on d6 but if i don't and play something like queen d4 there is b5 very annoying already do know i don't like this position maybe only b4 can be playable for white but it really um makes my position exposed in the king side it may be double-edged so talking about the pawn structure probably it's it's fine for white because i'm gonna play c5 next move and so forth but well in general it's not clear moreover there are some tricks like takes takes queen takes b4 green is sort of queen a3 no it, it's probably not correct but still when you are in a time trouble this may look very dangerous i mean that, that was a good chance at least okay so in any case uh very nice uh game very interesting one uh, thank you for this experience let's go further so another challenger i've never played before never ever played before uh robin andy also from united kingdom nice i'll accept it we'll accept the challenge and black pieces okay let's try philidor knight to c3 bishop e7 so-called antoshin system and bishop c4 which usually leads to super boring positions okay let's try it anyway typical thing here so I'm going to regain the piece next move after 94 I played d5 uh, with the help of this operation I just destroy white center the center uh, was this pawn on e4 in fact the single pawn but anyway uh, it controlled a lot why it's boring because we get almost symmetrical pawn structure after all these exchanges and it's really hard to achieve anything for both sides uh, but well black has several natural moves that i can make rather quickly so taking the knight next move if if of course white plays bishop to d3 
Uh, Fuchsia says, I once had bishop f7 here. Bishop f7 is bad because it gives black a pair of bishops and uh, potentially a better center because black will have this pawn on d5 in that case. So this way is just the correct one to take with the knights, then bishop d3, bishop e4, having both bishops on the board. c3. So now I have a chance to just to take the knight on d4. In fact, it is very annoying piece. And then I'll have a chance to play bishop e6, bishop d5, blockading this pawn on d4. So d4 becomes an isolated pawn. But I think position is balanced because what will have a pair of bishops, which will more or less compensate this drawback. So I'm going to try this anyway. And bishop e6 looks very natural and uh, typical, so especially after a4. I mean, inclusion of this a4 helps black, I guess, because b3 is weakened. It's just an additional weakness in white's camp. I didn't see a big compensation for this b3 square. All right, queen h5 attacking h7. Now I have a choice between g6 and f5. Both are completely playable. Uh, and then d4 will be hanging. That's the main problem for white. So I guess f5 is a very decent option. Uh, f5, bishop f3, let's say I take on d4, rook goes to e1, attacking my bishop on e6 is basically the only problem uh, for black in that line. Then I put my bishop somewhere, but I don't see a good square for it. So maybe g6 is better after all. Okay, we can dark squares, but I have a feeling that I'm able to protect them. So let's try this. Maybe f5 was better, to be honest. Giovanni asks, isn't it better to even grab the pawn on d6 instead of only go back? It's not possible to grab the pawn on d6 because it is on d5. I guess you mean the situation after knight takes c4. And knight e4 just d5. It is on d5. If you take on d5 again, it's it's like a sacrifice of the bishop. Not like material sacrifice, but you just give up your bishop for, for the knight, mm -hmm, which is not very good. Okay, so queen h6 here, I wanted just to, to take on d4, attacking the bishop. Of course, I cannot take this bishop in case white plays on like bishop g5, but I didn't. And now what to do? So queen g7 looks natural, knight a6 preparing knight to b4 looks also good. Don't really know what is better, so let's try knight a6. I think I'm fine. So extra pawn. Queen g7 is possible to protect dark squares. My rooks are ready to occupy open files. Should be okay. Uh, all right, so Giovanni, uh, bishop takes d5. Okay, just queen takes d5. Black is completely fine. I mean, the same situation with the pawn structure, but pair of bishops for black. So I think still bishop bishop d3 is, is the best option there. All right, queen g7 now. Queen h4. Preparing bishop to h6. Um, how to play this correctly? So h5 is a bit risky. Rook to e8. Rook f to e8. Then probably bishop to g5 is a 9. Well, 
But then I can play f5 after all, and if bishop f6, queen f7, all right, I'm, I'm doing well. So rook e8. And if bishop h6 instead, then I can take on b2. Now, of course, if I take on b2, there is bishop f6, followed by queen h6 and checkmate. So now it's time to play this move. To have the queen on f7 controlling g7 square, so that's preventing the checkmate. So th thanks to my bishop e6 position is more or less safe. Okay. This bishop controls a lot of important squares like b3. In general, this g8, a2 diagonal preventing white's bishop from occupying it and controlling d7 as well. All right, now what? Now what? I have to activate my knight somehow. I think knight b4 followed by knight d5 looks very natural. Looks oh, knight b4 drops the knight. On the other hand, if queen takes b4, queen takes f6, there is an exchange, but then b7 drops. All right, maybe through c7 is better. So let's try this one. So c7, then d5, let's say. Centralizing the guy. And dealing with the bishop f6 simultaneously. Closing the d file, after all. Yeah, just a good maneuver. I think. <laughs> I hope. <clears throat> okay, nothing is heading, I guess. So I can play just knight d5. All right, bishop d4. Um, what to do now? Tempting to try something like b6, c5, right? Yeah, I'm going to try this. At least I'm protecting a7 so that my rook is free now. And I can put it on d8, which is much better than a8. b3. Not so sure what the idea behind it, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter anymore. Bishop b2. Knight cannot move because rook on d8 is hanging, so maybe it makes sense to start with this. Oh no, there is queen d4. Queen d4 is potentially very annoying, so I guess c5 should be played to prevent it. Rook d3, rook 4, I guess. Controlling h3 square because there was a threat of queen h7. Taking everything, then rook h3 and checkmate. So white plates, very imaginative way. Uh, but the problem is that black simply has a great centralization here and everything's fine. Um, I have a feeling that after g6, uh, queen h6 is too much. So it was still possible to protect d4 pawn. Uh, maybe even just going back to d1. Um, Looks like going back and uh, wasting the time, but you just provoked me to play g6, so you have dark squares to play. Um, on the king's side, so you have a dark square bishop to, to use this weakness. So I guess something protecting d4 deserved attention here. Queen e5 or queen c5 are probably not that great, because if knight d7 uh, or something else, tempo gaining. Um, so queen to d1. Just protecting d4 and then continuing with the bishop h6 or bishop f4, bishop e5, something like that. Deserved serious attention. As for improvement of my play, I think f5 was much more convincing here. Just attacking the bishop. Now there is no chance to protect d4. I didn't really like this line. So queen takes d4, rook to e1. Attacking my bishop and I didn't see a good square to put it. Um, but I think it was just an overestimation of the problem. I guess something solid like queen to d7 should should work. Simply protecting it like this. A bit passive, but at some point I will just put it on d5 and then it'll be just a pawn up. Something like that. All right. So, yeah, losing a pawn uh, was probably an overestimation of your position uh, because black had enough 
resources to protect. But I like the idea of rook d to d3. So I was about to play something solid like, oh, by the way, rook d7 was possible. My first intention was to play rook d7. Uh, and it's important to protect h7 here. Uh, but if I do something else, like, you know, let's say a6, what has very strong threat? Oh, no, there was no such a threat because look, it's not a checkmate. I thought it is a checkmate, <laughs> but it's not because I have f7 square. So I thought there will be this combination rook here, but king f7 is possible. And there is similarly no perpetual because after rook h7, I have king f8. And now we've checked then bishop g8. Yeah, it was also winning. All right, so probably here white doesn't have enough counterplay uh, to cause a real problem. So as you can see, your bishop b2 is very active, but bishop c2 is quite limited. And since my queen is very nice here, controlling only important squares except for h8, so my only headache is h8 square, and if I uh, control the squares from where your queen can get there, I'm fine. So, especially here after bishop b2, it was very important to play c5, controlling d4. Otherwise, queen goes to d4 and it looks very good for white, maybe even just winning. So, c5, and as you can see, c3 is controlled, d4 is controlled. Well, the last square from where your queen can get to this diagonal is e5, because f6 is also controlled, but it's not realistic to get to e5. Um, Amazing. Amazing that uh, I thought queen h7 will lead to checkmate. Uh, I didn't notice this f7 square, but okay. To my defense, I was like in a time trouble. So I decided just to prevent it uh, by playing f4, also active move, just controlling h3. So that was enough. Let us continue one more game against somebody I've never played before. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Moby Chess from Netherlands, except. So I'm going to get back to normal order of challenges after this game. Here we go. Knight of three, D6 Sicilian now. Okay, let's play bishop c4. As far as I remember, last week I played h3 almost exclusively. So, bishop c4 deserves attention here, but I don't play this main lines like bishop b3 or castling, I just play a4. Mm. Castles. Castles, castles. All right, bishop b3. Completing a development. Mm, bishop d7. Can I just play a5 in this case? Does it make sense or not? Because usually black starts with the knight c6. What about just playing a5, knight to c6, uh, knight to b3, intended bishop to b6. Well, it's interesting to try. I mean, Blitz is usually for experimenting. Usually I don't play like that, of course, but I'm just curious if this order of moves, bishop d7 first and then knight to c6, makes a difference and gives white a chance to come up with this a5. I mean, knight c6, knight to b3, knight to e5, just bishop e2. And then there is a threat of bishop b6. There is rid of f4 at the same time. Yeah, I guess it's nothing in fact, but looks interesting. Just experimenting, all right? Just experimenting a bit. <clears throat> of course, usually why just uh, plays f4, f5, that's the point when you have the bishop on c4. Now we have a strange transposition probably to bishop e2 line, 
typical scavenging and Sicilian. But I didn't, I, I didn't see this position. I have a feeling that Queen to C8 was the correct move. Intended Knight to C4. Also not the end of the world for white, because after all there is always bishop to c1, but could have been a bit annoying. So now I think I have f4, just tempo move, let's do it. Okay, feels like the stream is fine for now. Knight e7. So what is next? e4 is under attack. Have to protect it somehow. I think there is nothing better than bishop to f3. It's a very natural way to protect the pawn in such a situation. And then white has a choice between like going back to d4 with the knight, just grabbing that bishop if there is a chance. Uh, there is also a typical plan of just playing g2, g4, g5, and so on. So it feels like black's minor pieces are a bit misplaced here. But I'm not sure that it's a critical problem. So now knight d4 looks like looks like the way to get the bishop pair. So I expected actually something connected with the b5 move for black. Not now, but one move before. Because now it's probably just something that loses the material even. So a b6, knight takes b6, then I take on c6 and take on a6. Yeah, I'm just a material up. Let's do it. Taking the bishop. e5 is also a resource, by the way. I don't know. e5 also looks very good. Then knight gets to d5. Knight takes d5, knight takes d5. Not entirely clear, so I'm going to start with this. Just rook takes a6, extra pawn already, and e5 becomes a real threat. Really annoying one. Well, well, well. So b5 was too late. I think if you want to play b5, it's better to have the rook on a8 in such a situation because inevitably a6 becomes weak and you need the rook to protect it. You need something to protect it. And the rook on a8 was, was a good defender. All right. Now position should be technically winning. Uh, but I still have to, 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 to prove it is. So let's start with the e5. Okay, and now, usually in such a pawn structure, it's a good idea to have the knight on d4. Uh, so let's go to d4 immediately. I like, why not? Let's go there. So exchange, queen a6, knight c6, I predicted that, because queen c8 was very natural. Now bishop on e7 is heading, and I'm going to, to occupy d4. Okay, this drops the bishop. Unfortunately for black, another blunder, and bishop d4. And even more. All right. It's over now. So I have a feeling that once I play a5, it was, of course, not the best move, I believe. Knight c6 and knight b3, knight e5, that was all correct. Uh, but I have a feeling that something like queen to c8 deserved attention here. Because black is going to put the knight on c4. Maybe even playing queen to c7. That is uh, tricky. And if bishop b6, then queen c8. Because now there is no something like knight a4 creating a threat of knight b6 because b6 is engaged. 
and there is a real threat of just putting the knight on c4 and getting one of the bishops, which should be fine for black. I have a feeling that it, it should work just fine. Um, at least it is better than bishop c6 in my opinion, because after this bishop c6, f4, knight here, and bishop f3 protecting um, e4. Uh, there is a problem with the bishop, so I'm going to play knight e4 and take it. Uh, I have a pair of bishops after that. So probably b5 immediately was possible, but even in this case, I'm not that sure in black's position. So after knight a5, my position again looks great. So even if you play b5, preparing bishop b7, as you can see after this exchange, my knight gets a5 square, and now I'm probably grabbing this bishop anyway or force it away where after something connected with the e5 will be very annoying for black. So this position already looks like better for white. I mean, I have a lot of space and my pieces are placed naturally, while black's pieces are slightly misplaced in my opinion. So this knight in d7 and bishop c6, not very typical setup for Skavenningen, all right? Um, here we go. Uh, thanks for this game. Let us continue. Now, the normal order of challenges. So the first was Graf on Pauline this time, except. Plan is black. Okay, something closed. Something closed this time. I mean, Graf on Pauline always plays something closed. Okay, let's try an 84 again. I don't know, is it only on my end, but it feels like the chat is broken. Because it maybe it's just a feeling, but it feels like <laughs> there are some old messages being posted. So last time against Graf von Pauline, I played knight c6 in this position. Just let me remember. What should be played here, in fact? I don't remember the right move here. Because I rarely play this line as black. But anyway. Okay, let's let's continue the same way, like knight c6. Chat is okay, says Giovanni, but all are lazy. Okay. So everything's fine. Nice. Nice. I'm also a bit lazy. This night. I'm not really into calculating. So I'm just playing mainly uh, by intuition, <laughs> which is not very good. It will work not that well at some point. All right, last time I played some like bishop d6. Let's let's continue because as far as I remember, I was completely satisfied with the position. Controlling dark squares. As you can see, I'm slightly ahead in development, which is quite good when you play as black. So let's take on f3. Have a strange feeling that that is exactly the position from our previous game. Might be wrong. It also feels like black has no problems already. And white is gonna like equalize here. So what about just f5 undermining this? E4. 
looks good at f very first glance because I have a sort of just taken on e4. And winning the material. And if e takes f5, all right, bishop f5, also tempo, kind of tempo move. Yeah, I love my position. Oh, e5. Really? Right? It's just a pawn. Just the extra pawn. Now, what if I just play queen f6? Uh, there is probably bishop to g5, right? Queen g5, rook e5. It's still an extra pawn, but my bishop is a bit stupid on g6. Maybe just queen d6 then, attacking h2. I don't see a uh, big problem with that. That should be fine. Rook on a8 is protected. I'm going to play rook a to d8 as well. A bishop is pinned to b2 pawn. Okay. g3 all right rook a to d8 is a move that is very hard not to play because just activation of the rook with the temple kind of very very natural thing so now very tempting to play f4 to be honest just to limit the activity of the bishop c1 let's try it I mean, if g takes f4, I'm completely satisfied with the resulting pawn structure. And if not, then it's very hard to develop that bishop. And I have this super square for mine, like bishop d4, with an outpost. And then e5, e4. Should be winning position for black, I guess. Already. So h5 is coming. Mm, let's prevent it. I mean, I like my bishop on this diagonal. It doesn't really prevent h5. I mean, let's deal with this. Because now h5 doesn't force my bishop away from this diagonal. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, g5. Do I really need the H file open or not? At least after H takes G5, I kind of save the time and can play E5 immediately as well as just attacking this G5. I think Queen C5 starts making great sense. Just attacking G5 and if Queen goes away, then taking on F2 becomes possible. Well, do you know? Queen c5 definitely deserves attention, but I don't see anything wrong with just e5, my planned move, the idea of e4, and then probably e3, just opening the position, and so on. Yep. Yeah. I uh, don't see a big reason to make the things complicated. <clears throat> this g5 is a weakness. That will never ever go away from me. It's there forever until I capture it. Bishop d2. Okay, Bishop f2 can win me one more pawn, I think. Then e5 will be hanging. Okay, so let's start with the e4 again. Don't see anything against this move. Queen g4, and now bishop f2 is definitely a pawn. Because queen no longer has a chance to take it. Takes. Check.
Now what? F3, queen e6, bishop f7 is just good enough. That should work. This should just work. Now this rook on e2 drops. <clears throat> this or that way. Rook e4, I just take the queen. So yeah, it's absolutely winning. All right, so probably you didn't find an improvement if compared to our previous game, because I think after f5, I have no problems whatsoever. Uh, the only thing here, I think, e takes f5, which is playable and all right, so it's probably not very pleasant position for white, but uh, I don't think it's it's lost what's, or something like that. So just queen e4, I cannot take on d5 right now. I don't have queen h4 jump. So it should, should be just an equal position. I don't know, queen f6, maybe rook f8, bishop c5. It should be playable, I mean. I can't believe that it's it's really bad for white. Should be okay. After you just uh, gave me a pawn for nothing, of course I wish might better. Okay, next one, Johann Wilhelm Möbius. And then don't tell me that I'm playing as white. No, I do. Playing as white. So Sicilian is coming. Sicilian is coming, and I don't know what to do against Wilhelm because. We always like play the same. Let's try bishop e2. Okie dokie. So here's the bishop on f5. So I managed to kind of win the time uh, because of this 95, 95, 85, and bishop went to f5, not from c8, but from e6. All right, queen to c7, attack in c2. Maybe a4 was a bit premature. Or maybe it's still okay because I have this move. C2 is no longer hanging, and I'm going to play a5 at some point. But black played b6. Well, I mean, a5 is still possible, but after b5, I'm not sure that I achieve anything. Uh, but let's try it. I mean, it's sort of fresh. Never seen such a position before. I mean, never seen this particular position, of course. I saw a lot of uh, similar situations. All right, bishop b6, is it needed or not? In general, I want to undermine b5 with the c4. So do I need this bishop b6? I don't think so. So queen goes to c8 or b7, then knight to d7. My bishop on b6 only becomes an object of attack. I don't like it. So let's go knight e2 with the idea of c4. Knight d7 and c4, or what? Yeah, why not? Just undermining b5. <sighs> what happened before Wishblade? Okay, I'm not that sure in this move, but well, it doesn't feel like I have a chance to win this b4 pawn. If I play queen a4, there's rook b8, and then I don't think I have a follow up. Queen c6, maybe, deserves attention there, or maybe even c5, and then I take on a6. Yeah, this may be interesting, so let's try this queen a4 right away. This position is really somewhat fresh, I believe. Oh, after rook b8, I also have bishop b6. That is nice. So now let's take the pawn, right? Yeah, let's take a pawn. Pawn up. 
Am I mistaken? e4 is coming but then I have bishop d4 bishop d4 queen d4 okay let's let's castle it's time to complete the development at least then to put one rook on c8 or sorry c1 at some point Oh, that is a mistake. Now e4 is possible and I lose the pawn on b4 if I play bishop to d4. Just a blunder. Okay, probably now I have to sacrifice the exchange or something. So queen a3, bishop takes a1, bc5. Um, oh, that's annoying. Uh, but probably I will have a compensation. No, bc5 is bad, but simply taking on a1 is okay, I think. I should have a compensation for missing exchange because I have a pair of bishops, a pawn and very nice majority here on the queen side. Should be interesting. Knight to d3. Now what? b4 is hanging right. Right. Bishop b6 to start with. Or just taking on d3. No, taking on d3 is lame. Bishop b6 is may lead to rook b6 takes takes and then bishop d3 e d3 well, at least i regain the material so and then i can play c5 yeah things should be playable at least a tempo move which is important here okay so now material is even and i have this interesting continuation so let's take here and now c5 it doesn't make sense I think, yeah, it does. So at least I create a passer, which is important. Which is very important. <clears throat> yeah, interesting game. Before it was a blunder, but feels like... After all, it was not that bad. Okay, not quite sure what's going on here, but it feels like I need this h3 move just to make the back rank not that weak. So now if it goes away from a8, uh, there is always uh, queen takes a6 without much problems. So I lost my, my, my comments, my chat, just trying to get back All right, we'll do that after this game. Uh, let's try this slight improvement, queen to c3. So what happened, rook went to c8. Okay, so c5 is under attack. I wanted to try something connect with rook to a5. But now I see that queen e8 is possible, then creating instead of queen e1. So maybe it's better just to play rook to c1. Or maybe still rook a5 if queen e8. Then okay, just uh, rook takes a6. I don't have the time. Uh, don't have the time simply. My goodness, I'm going to lose this on time. I have to be faster. Now queen b sandwich played, okay. That is not that uh, dangerous, I think. Mm. Mm. 
Very interesting position. Very sharp. Mm, what's going on here? I've got no idea. It's really hard. I'm going to lose this on time, I think. And not only on time. Yeah, Black has beaten me. Out of absolutely lost position, Black has just beaten me. Lost on time and position is also lost. Oh, that was just a complete crap. I mean, um, I've got absolutely winning position. I mean, after taking that pawn on b4, it was completely winning. I started playing like a complete idiot. So, rook to b8. Uh, first of all, this queen c3 is arguable so queen to a3 was probably slightly better but okay queen c3 cannot be a bad move just after bishop f6 play something normal andre don't play this bullshit that you played um don't really know what was the best move here but there should be something i, I don't believe that black is doing well in this position being just a pawn down um, maybe queen a3, maybe queen a3 was better. I'm not sure. Or maybe here, just play g4. Yeah, g4, I completely missed this. Moreover, I just thought about this move um, before. So now bishop g6, just g5. Getting rid of that bishop and I can play g5. b4 after that, completely squeezing black on a queen side. Yeah, g4, g5, so simple. If e4, just play bishop here takes takes bishop should go away and it should be just a position with the extra material yeah black has some 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 play still um but it's not compared to what we had in our game so i just made a mistake here lost the exchange then fortunately found this bishop b6 sort of compensation c5 but you need much more time to to play such a position because it is quite complicated so h3 h5 here i should have played something else for sure so it's very nice that the rook cannot go away from a8 for now so probably i should have used it somehow maybe queen a5 yeah why didn't i play queen a5 here i'm so stupid really just play queen a5 because the ending should be very good like i have a sort of playing b5 my pawns are very very dangerous here i guess his pawn d3 is also strong, but it's kind of blockaded. So let's check rook e8 here. But come on, it's not dangerous at all. So I can take on a6. And if rook e2, I just play rook a2. There is nothing, absolutely, for black. I mean, my pawns start moving. Should be just gradually winning, all right? Okay. Yeah interesting but well you should learn something about this order of moves because like yeah playing before there was in my opinion quite dubious so i had just very simple uh play against that pawn okay in any case what am i talking about i've just lost the game like a complete passer except next challenge <sighs> Waiting for opponent. Kramnik student says lower than 2900s. 
Yes. Very, very bad. Um, all right. Hmm, very strange to play h3, g4, then bishop d3. So usually you play h3, g4 to attack this bishop, not to exchange it. Feels like help. So let's castle first. Player number five. We're all losing completely winning positions, don't we? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do it as well, but really not that often. Uh, what's going on here? What about knight e4, knight e4, e5, something like this? Knight e4, knight e4, e5 looks like knight b3 then. Maybe just e5. That's probably too much. But come on. We're playing Blitz first of all. Second of all, I have better development. So sacrificing the pawn for even more development doesn't look like very dangerous. Doesn't look like very risky idea, something like that. So should be just absolutely playable. Now to take on the e5, not to lose the time, or to take on d4. Both are interesting, so I'm going to take on e5. Bishop e5, now f6. Attacking the bishop first. At least having a chance to take on d4 then, later. All right, and here I wanted to try something like bishop to a3 or bishop b4. Bishop a3 looks interesting. Uh, maybe I'm blundering something, but right now it looks very good. Sort of initiative is still, is still on my side. B takes a3, queen c3 check. If bishop d2, I just take on d4 with the queen. Oh, I have no idea. I feel like I'm so tired by the end of this week. <laughs> but it should be good position for black. I have much better pawn structure now and materially balanced position is on the board and uh, no, it should be just great. Should be just great. Now, queen c3 check is winning for sure. Queen e4 is winning for sure. So I prefer this one. So queen c3 check. If king goes away, I just take the queen of bishop d2, then rook d2 finishes the game. Simple deflection, queen d2, queen a1. It's over. Extra minor piece, no compensation. No, I could have captured on h3. I told you, I, I'm just so tired. <laughs> I don't even see this simple moves. Collecting material. All right, it's time. It's time to take it. Let's take everything.
yeah lost position completely um i guess your problem started when you played h3 g4 and then played bishop to d3 usually you wanted this bishop on g6 to attack it somehow to continue with h4 and so on maybe knight to e5 it's a typical thing but knight e5 here it doesn't work but something like d5 can be interesting but maybe here I have knight b4, but then you have knight d4. It's one story. Another story is to try bishop to b5, in fact, just damaging my pawn structure, and then putting your knight on e5 at some point, and so forth. But not bishop d3. After bishop d3, probably black has no problems already. Just castling, then tempo play. So black has better development. You have to protect your uh, king, which is in the center. You have to protect numerous pawns here that hanging. And as you can see, as a result, after some... Uh, exchanges position becomes just too loose to uh, protect everything there okay let's go further uh, VRL Victor except and black pieces again So Rui Lopez this time. I'm gonna try this line. Just like Chigorin but without castling. <laughs> I used to play this when I was a kid many years ago. Uh, kind of getting extra tempo because castling is not really needed. For example, here, what about cd4, cd4, knight c6, d5, knight b4, bishop goes to b3, not yet clear, so let's start with bishop d7, d5, okay. Now there are two options usually to play c4 or just to play knight c4 and knight b6 then. Um, I'm not quite sure what it, what is better. Well, let's try c4 in this game. Grab an additional space. And actually creating c5 square potentially for the knight. Something like knight b7, knight c5 becomes very a simple maneuver to try it right now or to improve the position of this knight first. Yeah, let's move the knight to c5. This cannot be bad. <clears throat> so here, knight is much more active if compared to a5 position. No questions. No questions whatsoever before mm, not a bad idea not a bad idea so now if i take on b3 pawn takes i play a5 i should be fine there so let's do it takes takes a5 at some point even a4 creating a passer again should be just okay for me It's interesting where to go to b4, to a6 or to b7, uh, because potentially from a6, the knight can go through b8 to d7, then to b6 to c4, but it's probably not a realistic maneuver. From b7, on the other hand, the knight can go to d8, and just like in Rubinstein's system, 
after knight e8, g6, knight g7, f6, knight f7 is possible. This sort of stuff. Let's try this maneuver. Not quite sure that it is the best one possible here, but it feels like a playable stuff. Okay. Pawn on b5 was hanging, but now it's protected. Okay, c4 is not necessarily that dangerous. And I'm gonna play just like in the Rubenstein system. So g6, knight, g7, f6, knight, f7. And then at some point, f6, f5. <laughs> Long term stuff. Long term stuff. Okay, knight is gonna play to g4. Slightly annoying. All right, maybe I'm just not in time to perform such a maneuver. Or alternatively, I can try h6, bishop g5 now. So let's let's try this one. Okay, again, I'm losing my chat. So is it playable? Not quite sure, but looks natural. After I played h6, why not bishop g5? Ninety-three. Okay, now it's time to play g6. Is there a threat? Knight takes c5 is a threat. Okay, position becomes not so pleasant. Most likely, I just misplayed it. So queen to a7 is a move. For now, looks like almost the only option to go away from that C file. Not losing immediately some material. I guess it's fine. Okay, G5 is under attack, so let's protect it with the F6. Position remains solid. Now without this dark squid bishops, I have some interesting possibilities. Queen d4, queen d4, is it possible to play queen d4 now? Knight c6 is coming. Maybe annoying potentially, but knight c6. Uh take c6. Have no idea. Let's let's play rook c8. I don't think that given what a chance to play this knight c6 is smart. So let's control c6 additionally just with the rook. Okay now. Let's get, put the king on the dark square. I think it, it matters. And now queen d4. Why dark square just to be not accessible for that bishop in case position becomes open. Yeah, position is unclear. Feels like black is doing well. So somewhere white missed some chances, I think. Start with, I wouldn't ever give black a chance to play bishop g5, honestly. All right, 92, I planned to do what? To put the queen on b6, a slight improvement if compared to a7 position from where I went to d4. Now if knight c3, I just take the pawn on b4. That's the thing. Yeah. Feels like a very comfortable position. Yeah, that is what I was talking about. That's the difference between a7 and b6 squares. So I control b4 from b6. And I'm just a pawn up. The same, but the pawn up. Not an a5 is really bad. Probably there is a problem with saving it even. Now what, to take with the knight and then to take with the bishop, or to take with the knight and to take with the rook after that? I think taking with the bishop is natural. Okay, intermediate move. 
which is not necessarily that great. Um, okay. Two pawns. Two extra pawns. And I don't see a great compensation. To be completely honest, I don't see compensation at all. Yeah, it's lost. So knight c3 was actually uh, a big blunder, given me b4 pawn. But I think black's position is already quite quite pleasant. So maybe here knight c6 was was interesting, just to sacrifice a pawn, but uh, to activate the bishop. I'm not sure what happens there. So knight c6 takes here, takes here. Now bishop c6, just bishop to c4 check. Or even rook takes c6, I don't know. Sacrificing the exchange, but exploiting light squares. There is also something like queen a2 possible. Check. King gets to g7. And now something really annoying like queen e6. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe black has a strong response like, you know, queen d7 or something. But, well, these ideas are in the air. Maybe there is a possibility to start with opening the position like after h4 and so on, but yeah, do know. Unfortunately, there is no chance to play b5. There is no possibility. Oh, now I know. That was possible after rook c8. Oh. So if I take with the rook, now knight on a5 is not hanging and you can play b5. That is very strong. And then knight goes to c6. My god, this position is just very bad. Just very bad for black, all right? If I take with the bishop, then just knight c6. Not even sacrificing the pawn. Yeah. Or maybe even just taking on a4 here, you know? Yeah, white is much better. So rook c8, rook takes c8, and b5. I don't see what to do. I mean, I guess to c6 next move. And a4 is hanging already. That was your chance to try to win the game. Because after I activated my queen and you didn't have a chance to play knight c6, I think I was doing well already. Here, I just hate my position. Okay, let us continue. Shrumel is next. Uh, gonna play one or two games more. Okay, let's try f4. I've tried literally everything against Shurmel here. Okay, almost everything, but... Never played f4. So let's see. c5. Now we have a transposition to Grand Prix attack from Sicilian, which is nice, because I don't know, but maybe Shermel doesn't know the theory of this. I don't. I don't know it either. But <laughs> it's easier to play with white, I guess. So let's put the bishop on c4. So it's really simple. You just castle play a five sacrifice in the pawn, then just attack. And black has to show the knowledge. Castles. Let's go there to h4 with a queen. Time to play a five. Otherwise, it will be very late. Okay. Here is my pin on g5, right? But then h6. 
So maybe queen h4 should be played first. But then what? Then just knight somewhere, and what do I have? Bishop g5, yeah. Okay, let's put the queen on h4. Let's put the queen on h4 now. <clears throat> Some typical things, right? For Grand Prix. Um. Probably it's just a waste of time for Black. This knight g4, because bishop g5 looks like a tempo move. If bishop f6, I'll have knight d5, very promising. If that goes back to f6, it's a clear waste of time. Yeah, this should be very bad for, for black, I think. I think. But, you know, there is still a chance. So if bishop takes g5, then knight takes g5, there is h6 move. I should be careful about that. So maybe it makes sense to start with h3, just attacking the knight. Uh, it feels very promising for white. It looks very promising at least. Hard to say. Well, let's try it. I, I'm really tired already, <laughs> so let's just play something that looks natural. Takes takes. Oh, just knight goes back to f6. I thought h6 was the only move because after knight f6 now. I have knight d5, it looks so promising. I can't believe there will be an extra defense, like, do you know? h5 is, is forced now, but it weakens position so much. Is it really playable? I don't believe. It's hard to believe in such a thing. Now I think I'm missing something really simple. <sighs> so knight takes f7, rook takes f7, and knight takes f6, right? Yeah, that is. That is the tactics. Tactics of the knight. I mean, rook f7, knight f6, and the rook is pinned. And now the queen is hanging. King f7 doesn't really help because if knight f6 check from the bishop, I think. It doesn't really help, but it may help, in fact. <laughs> yeah, it may help, actually. <laughs> oh, no. I can't believe it works. Probably after king f7, I should start with e takes f5. Looks really devastating, but black is somehow still in the game. That's really surprising. Okay, rook f7 should be just very good for white, I mean. Okay, again, I forgot to refresh my smartphone, so I've lost comments. Okay, king g7. Difference is that I can take on f7 with the bishop now, right? But then my knight is stuck a bit. Should I start with knight h5, g h5, queen g3, check, king f8, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, and then just taking on f5. Mm, still two minor pieces for the rook. So bishop f7, king takes f7, e takes f5, bishop f5, rook f5, g f5, queen takes h5, king takes f6. I'm not sure in that position. Oh, there is g4 resource as well. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Oh, this way. Okay, just extra exchange for nothing. I thought king f7 was the only chance because my knight was pinned on f6. And I thought e takes f5, like bishop f5, g4, something like that. But e takes f5, no, okay. Do not. Simply do not. I'm just too tired. 
for now. Last week, Shurmo managed to beat me on time, so this time I'm going to improve my time management at least. All right, let's fix the weakness. Let it, oh, simplification. That cannot be correct. <clears throat> yeah, lost position. Simply lost position. <clears throat> so, not quite sure, but after knight g5, I thought the last chance will be like to play h6. Maybe not the last chance, maybe it's just better for black. I have no idea. But h6 looked very promising. I don't know why didn't you play that. Uh, so basically my knight is pinned, and if I play knight f3, you just exchange queens, and then play knight to e5, having everything protected. If I take on g4, you can take on g5. Maybe even with the queen, it's safer. Takes, takes, but in this case, I think I, I'm still slightly better. Maybe not slightly, maybe just better, do you know? But still, it feels like a playable position, I don't know. Not sure in that. If you take with the pawn, of course, I have this queen h6, which is very annoying, just attacking g6, and still a five is hanging, and so forth. Position looks a bit vulnerable, at least. So yeah, yeah. There, there is something else should be played earlier. So it's after f5, maybe g takes f5. Looks like a better option because now you have very concrete play in the center. I mean, if I take here, you have d5. At least my bishop doesn't take part in the attack. Which may change everything. Actually, do you know? Um, somewhere earlier, maybe not even playing e6, maybe trying some like knight to d4, deserved attention as well. Yeah, this may be this may be a solution. All right. Um, so one more, one more game. It will be the last for this episode because I'm just deadly tired. And we're going to try to get back to 2900s at least. All right. Oh, knight c3, okay. Knight f6, Vienna, or something like that. No. This Glex system or something like that. Just developing the pieces one by one. Intending to play e4 at some point, maybe. Well, in many cases, black doesn't play e4. Black plays like bishop to g4, trying to force h3, g4, weakening the king side, and only then thinking of some advances in the center, I guess. We'll see what white is going to do. All right, d4. I guess it's fine just to take. And now there should be something against this d4 pawn. In general, these pawns are not very healthy. So c4 square is kind of great outpost for my knight, potentially. So let's complete the development first. H3, bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, right? And then maybe knight b4 at some point. Attack and c2. Okay, my opponent is thinking, spending a lot of time here. Q4, 
going to d3. Isn't it the move that gives me extra tempo? Like, what if I just play knight before now? Queen goes to b3, most likely. Then, however, I have bishop b6 followed by b5. I don't know, it's very tempting to try, so I'm going, going to try this move. She's attacking the queen and pawn on c2. Right now, I wanted to play bishop b6 or bishop f5 to know which one is better. I have no idea. But I think bishop b6 is interesting. And if c4, I have b5. This looks very tempting to try. Because I just start the attack against c4, direct attack. And I have a better development for now. Which can be annoying thing for for white. Interesting that if knight goes to g5, I just take on c4 with the bishop. And if queen b1, I have bishop d3 protecting h7. If d5, I take on c4 first, and then I take on d5 with the bishop or with the knight. That is what I calculated prior to playing this bishop b6. So, do you know if knight d2, I take on c4, knight takes c4, and I play at least work to b8. Ah, it looks, looks like like already has the initiative. <clears throat> because white started active operations prior to completing a development. Usually it's better to have everybody de developed prior to forcing something in the position. That's my opinion. Especially if we talk about open positions, about open games and so forth. All right. Ninety five. All right, I didn't see this move, but it's not necessarily that dangerous. So I can take on e5. I can just take on e5. That's the point. Hmm. Maybe it was a blunder. <laughs> Would be nice if it is. Uh, bishop c4, queen b4, bishop f1, bishop takes a8, queen a8, king f1, queen h1, check, okay, king goes to e2. Yeah, it's probably a blunder. But what if I just protect uh, the knight? What if I just protect the knight here? Like playing a5, this should be promising. Because light squares become very weak so okay bishop takes a8 just an exchange after all but now i guess i'm fine so i'm taking on c4 attacking the queen then i can take the rook on f1 and so on uh queen c3 i can also just play knight d5 i think it's even stronger let's play knight d5 attacking the queen Yeah, this looks nice. <sighs> Should be just winning for black now. I have a feeling that I will get back to 2900 plus. Such an achievement after 3000, right? <laughs> okay, rookie one. White's well, only potential threat is just to play e6, so probably it makes sense for me just to blockade this pawn. I'm a pawn up. Middle game with opposing colored bishops, which is uh, very good for black because black is gonna attack. The king is very, very bad. There should be just a checkmate in several moves, I think. Or at least very strong checkmate in threat.
Bishop d2, look at rook d3. Queen to c1. Uh, bishop d5, right? Or queen h3 first. Queen h3. Creating threat of rook takes g3. Uh, now it takes. <clears throat> and takes the rook. It's over. It's over now. Very close to. Yeah, there is a checkmate. All right. All right. That was a nice encounter. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, I was completely correct with this uh, capture on e5. But it felt very good anyway. I'm not sure why why didn't actually take uh, on a8 when there was a chance. Yeah, like here. Bishop takes a8 was interesting. Uh, what happened? Yeah, here. Bishop takes a8. No, even rook d1 first. That was a correct move, I think. Yeah, that is a move, really. Oh, maybe no. Maybe no, look at this. There are eight tactics. No, there is no tactics. Sorry for that. I thought there is a chance to, to do something like this. So BC4 takes, takes, but what has at least queen f3 and queen a4 to control d1, so there is no chance for me to, to get there. Yeah, even if I play a4, then queen b4, no, rook takes d8 first, of course. Now, after taking here, queen takes b4, rook d1, bishop here, and then bishop b2, next move. And uh, white should win. Yeah, probably rook d1 was very good. So I have to go away. Now I'm just losing the exchange for sure. I mean, the, your rook is no longer enough one handing after bishop c4. So you take here, I take here. Probably I have a compensation because of bishop h3 threat, because of bishop c4. But I don't believe uh, it is something more than just a compensation. It's probably white is playing for a win here after f4 or something like that. I'm not sure, but feels like it shouldn't be too much. Shouldn't be that much for black. All right. Yeah, rook d1 deserved attention. After a3, I believe black is already winning. So it's just a waste of time. I just take on c4. And now, yeah. Even if you don't play queen c3, I just take on f1. At least there will be a material equality. Maybe black will have an extra pawn. After this, for example, black has extra pawn. And strategically, absolutely winning position. All right. In any case, uh, thank you for the game. Thank you for this evening. Uh, sorry for slight technical problems at the very beginning of the show. Um, I hope I managed to solve them and you had uh, a great time watching this, learning something new, uh, following my thinking process and so on. Wish you all great weekend uh, and uh, see you next week. Bye bye.